Hello, good afternoon. Hope everybody's having a nice Sunday. We're celebrating St. Patrick's Day here in the States. I don't know if anybody else is doing that, but uh, my uh, the city where I live does a big parade uh, the day before, or rather the Saturday before St. Patrick's Day. So there was a lot going on yesterday uh, in town. Uh, I have never attended. <laughs> uh mostly because i just don't like crowds and parades but uh but it is is a big deal here um so hope you all are having a good day um it uh it's a bright and sunny day today but kind of cold uh windy so unfortunately i won't be able to have the window open like i have in the previous weeks i think i'm gonna go ahead and get the fan going because it's warm in here Okay, cool. So uh, we're doing some bevy again today. Keep going. Um, continuing to learn about how to how to build things. Uh, hi, Justin. Glad you can make it. Are you not running a D&D game today? Um, but uh, yeah, so we're, we're gonna, gonna try to clean some things up. Uh, I'd like to try to move we have time sort of to the next level like I want to start building we've kind of got some of the basic mechanics done um, I want to start building tools that we can use to grow the game um, you know we we play with the level editor we played with um, the uh, you know the basic mechanics of how uh, excellent that's good to hear Justin um, we play the basic mechanic excuse me, mechanics of how enemies work, how weapons are spawned and so forth. We've done a lot with collisions because that seems to be the most complicated thing and the most one of the most important things in this in this game uh, style. Um, so uh, so I'd like to I'd like to get to hopefully um, making more of, or making less of this game hard coded. Uh, we might look at uh, creating data files or script files or something. Um, really want to get to an idea of how we might be able to design levels that have multiple kinds of enemies. Uh, those enemies have multiple kinds of skills. Your player can pick up different weapons, maybe. Uh, something like that. So um, really just building toward um, making this more than a toy. Um, making the gameplay a little bit more compelling because uh, right now it's not very compelling. Uh, some other things we could do is we could uh, put some UI on the uh, on the screen in addition to the the world space that we're rendering. Um, you know, like we could show the the player's hit points. Um, we could show enemy hit points potentially. We could show damage being done by collisions. Um, so that's an interesting thing to to think about. Um, and of course, you know, there's always cleanup to do because we're, we're, we're trying to make things work and then we have to go back and make them better. <laughs> it's sort of the way it is with any software project, but especially with this, I feel like, um, if we don't make it better, it's gonna become unmanageable later. And I'm going to hate it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, let's, let's, let's get started. Um, I have our to-do list from last time. We only had in here, pull enemies and weapons from the sprite sheet instead of individual sprites. I think that's not such a big deal to do. Um, we can get rid of some of our existing asset loading um, and turn it into sprite sheets. Um, so yeah, yeah, let's let's get started on that. And my, God, my terminal looks so big. Let me bump that down a size or two. That's a little better, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I think it is in the player plugin we spawn the weapons. Uh, throw a weapon. Yeah, so last time, if I recall correctly, we, we made a ghost bundle as one of the uh, enemy uh, types. I think we should do the same with the weapon bundle. So let's make a dagger bundle. Um, and then a lot of this can be um, done by default. So so like we can 
we can create the collider by default, the health collision damage. Those can all be hard coded or maybe later loaded from a config file. Um, and then uh, really the only thing we would need to set is the velocity, which is based on the direction it's going. So um, <clears throat> yeah, let's do that. All right, um, let's see here. So we got player bundle. Um, yeah, I kind of, I think for this one, I'd like to implement default. Um, and then the only thing we have to override is the movement bundle. Um, we will come back and replace this sprite bundle with the sprite sheet. I think that's a good place to start. Um, let's just do it right here above this system. Not the best place, but, uh, and we're going to have to derive bundle and debug. I think that's what we have to do. Um, dagger bundle. Okay. And uh, we're going to have to split so I can see both of these, it looks like. Okay. So we have a dagger. Uh, we have sprite, which is a sprite bundle. Um, we might need to do, instead of default, from world or something. Let's see. I think actually the handle, yeah, we'll have to fill in transform and texture on that. That's fine. I'm not, not a big deal. Uh, we'll have a collider. We'll have a health. Uh, we'll have collision damage. What else we got here? And we got movement bundle. Okay. And uh, let's implement default for dagger bundle. Fill the struct fields in. Okay, so the sprite um, here we can do default, I think. First, the collider, this is the part that we want to plug in our uh, default values that we're going to put on every single one. You know, we're not varying the, we're varying the transform on this sprite bundle. We're not varying the texture, so that's kind of a, a waste a little bit, but um, just keep the changes minimal here. But for these other ones, we these are dependent on it being a dagger. Um, honestly, this feels like it should be um, okay. And actually, we can just do default default there. Um, this feels like it should be in a data file because, like, we would want the dagger to have particular attributes. Um, but um, you know, let's let's continue cleaning this up for now. Okay, so if we go down in here, we can change this spawn into dagger bundle, and uh, let's say by default it's that. Um, but we need to do sprite sprite bundle. And we're going to do sprite assets.dagger.clone. So we're just kind of redoing the stuff that's up here. OK, so we've got the sprite bundle. The only other thing we needed to change was the movement bundle. Get a comma in there. And let's just copy this goop. And that's quite that's quite a bit better. Okay, so now now we can see. Oh yeah, this is just you know we're we're spawning all these things that are default that we need on there for the other systems, um, but uh, but we don't have we don't have so much visual noise. We have we're changing the texture and the transform on the sprite, and uh, we're setting the velocity. Cool. Okay. Um, one thing I thought of uh, 
uh, in between streams. Uh, oh, high transi Stark. Uh, yeah, first he's up with Rust. It is great with Rust. <laughs> it's not always so happy in my big mono repo that has like three different languages in it um, for work, uh, but it's great for this. Um, so uh, I was about to say, one thing we might want to consider is make a component for how a weapon is spawned or how it ticks damage, for instance. Uh, so obviously with, with a dagger, it's a thrown weapon in, the, in our game, and we throw it in four directions. Um, you could conceive of um, the spawn behavior being a component, potentially, on this, on this weapon. Um, maybe even the weapon is a, is a child. Well, the weapon that the player is holding is different from the weapon that's like a projectile or something doing damage in the world. Um, so that's something to think about, too. But uh, we could conceive of a system that, or component that specifies how a weapon is spawned. And this is, this is like the four directions spawn um, as a component. And then, um, <clears throat> and then have a system that doesn't care about what kind of weapon it is, but looks at how it's spawned and then spawns those uh, into the world um, on, the, on the tick interval. So that's maybe something we can think about for later. Um, no, we're kind of smashing this all together. We're, we're ticking the cooldown of, um, of, of the weapon spawning. And then, and then we're, you know, if it fish, if it finished the cooldown, um, then we, we, uh, we go ahead and spawn the weapon, but we're doing it very hard coded. We're, we're not like, if, if I were doing this differently, I might say, give me, um, Maybe there's a list of weapons um, on the player, uh, but it would we would tick down that that uh, that spawn cooldown separately, and maybe fire an event um, that would uh, then go. Okay, I'm going to look at what the what the weapon is, like what kind of weapon it is, um, and use the components on that on that weapon type um, to to spawn. Uh, projectiles or to tick damage or something anyway that's sort of like thinking about the future uh, <laughs> uh okay so what's wrong here okay it doesn't implement debug no no big deal there we don't care about debug yeah and like for this one which is our you know we spawn the player out of the the level editors definition of where the player is and you know it doesn't have debug on it okay <clears throat> Um, so, so that's, that's a little bit cleaner for that. Um, I think that, uh, and we, last time we did the ghost, so it has a sprite bundle. I think we're almost in the spot where we could do the sprite sheet, um, instead. So I feel like, um, let's go up into our asset loader. And I want to kind of redo all of this, and it's going to break our stuff for a little while. Um, but but we can get rid of this like hand picking the tiles. Yeah, we might also want to look at Bevy Asset Loader. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to interact with LDTK, but. Um, yeah, for now let's let's do this. Let's redo or let's let's just add for now and then we'll go back and after we've changed all these things to the sprite sheet um, to the you know the, the texture atlas basically um, we can um, uh, we, we can get rid of these other fields and this this other wall sprites thing. Okay, so we'll say uh, Let's call it uh, sprites, and this will be a handle to an image. Okay, and now it's going to complain down here. You didn't supply this field, so uh, sprites. We're going to do asset server dot load, and the interesting thing here is it may be loaded by LDTK, but um, when we, I think it was tile mac. Yeah, I know we can't open it with that. <laughs> Reveal and Finder, please. Yeah, it was the packed one. Yeah. 
So let's do Kenny Tiny Dungeon Tile Map Tile Map Packed. Hang. Okay. So now we're at least loading it. Um, and let's just find everywhere we're using that sprite assets. Uh, not a big deal here. So let's look. Let's look at Ghost. Uh, one thing they changed recently is like, if I hit that that header, it's just jumping to the file to the first instance. But I have this part selected. What's that? No, I don't want to do code. <laughs> Uh, okay. So we've got sprites here. Let's switch this to a sprite sheet bundle. And uh, we're going to have to do a bunch of things here. So uh, let's look at, I have it open here uh, in one of these windows. Yeah, so sprite sheet bundle requires uh, a texture atlas, a texture atlas sprite. Um, so we probably need to build a texture atlas here. Uh, let's look at what that is. So the texture atlas has a handle to an image, uh, a size, and a vec of rectangles. Uh, so I had pulled up the, one of the examples. Um, so I think what we need to do is look at what they do here, uh, and we need to build a texture atlas, it looks like. Um, so let's maybe walk through this and, fi and figure this out. Um, there's not really an explanation on this right now, but we can we can start at the top and, and have a look Okay, so this is generating a texture atlas from a folder containing individual sprites. That's not what we want to do. Um, so let's go back here. Uh, animating sprites. So maybe this is better. Okay. Um, so let's look at their setup system. Their animate sprite just loops through and like sets the index on the atlas on a timer. Okay. Uh, okay, so they load. They load the. Okay, so they load the picture, file, um, and then they create it from a grid. Uh, so let's look at this texture atlas layout in the docs real quick. Um, texture atlas layout. Interesting. Is that still valid? Texture Atlas. Um, we could look at this. Builder, which is used to create a texture atlas for many individual sprites. No, that's not what we want. Atlas containing multiple textures. So what we were looking at. Um, okay, so here is just from. It's not. I don't know what that that example was doing. Texture atlas layout from grid. They're saying. Um, just from grid. Okay, this is probably the easiest way to do this. Um, so I think what I want to do in our asset loader is instead of this being a handle to an image, um, what we will do, let's remove that. I'm sorry, this was, this is the wrong direction to go. What we want here is a, um, Texture atlases. 
as mute texture atlas, right? Um, and then we can do, uh, let's say tile map is asset server dot load. And I wish I hadn't gotten rid of that line. Let's go back. Did I copy it? No, I did not. Okay. Let me grab that line so I don't have to retype it. Okay. Uh, tile map is this. So that's the handle to our image. Oh, delete, please. Okay, and then, um, yeah. Uh, and then I'll just put it on the end. It actually doesn't matter what the order of arguments is. Texture atlases is a res mute texture atlas. Yep, okay. So, uh, so then we'll do from grid, um, and we know all the values for, for this. This is really simple. So we'll say uh, let atlas texture atlas from grid, um, and we have the tile map is the texture. The tile size is vec2 splat of 16, because we know they're all 16 pixels. And let's, let's go look at that image real quick. Um, I think we are one, two, three, and yeah. let's look at healthy TK. because um, we have, have the tile set in here. One, two, three, four. Actually, we can just look at that. So it's 10. Ten by 12. Zero, 12. Oh, wait, hold on. That's 11. Okay, so it's 12 by 12, right? Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven rows? Hundred and thirty yeah. Yeah, okay. So so twelve across, eleven down. Okay. So columns twelve, rows eleven, padding, what is this supposed to be? Padding none and none. We have no padding and no offset because it's a packed tile map. Okay, and then we go texture atlases dot insert. Or is it asset server? Let's look, go back and look at their example. Okay, so there's a texture atlas layout. But remember, this this is oh, this is latest. They've changed this. This is part of the problem. Look at zero twelve. <sighs> okay, so resmute assets texture atlas. Okay, this is this is what I got wrong. Because there's no method on a single resource. <laughs> Okay, and then that, that's basically all we have to do. Um, so, as sets of texture atlas. Okay, and then we go add atlas. And then we're done. Okay, so now we, we have loaded that, we've defined the texture atlas, and we can, um, we can get it, hopefully. Uh, one thing that's not clear to me here is all oh, right so we need the handle to it so let's let's get that um, handle 
Hello, Texified. Hi, iSense. Thanks for joining. Yeah, so we need this handle and we need to keep it around. Uh, this is one thing that I almost did wrong. Um, we put it into the set of resources that are available, but we need to know which one it is. Um, so I'm going to put um, tile map up here. Uh, let's just call it tiles. And this is going to be a handle to a texture atlas, right? Because uh, that's what we just inserted into the asset server. Um, so it's giving us back a handle. And then let's go tiles is atlas handle. OK, so now when we go, um, we go back up. So let's look at their example real quick. Yeah, so there's this texture atlas sprite. So um, so we'll create a sprite sheet bundle, and we'll give it this texture atlas handle that we stored in the resources. Um, and, uh, and then we'll pick which one it is, which tile it is for our individual um, uh, entities in the world. And yeah, and so I think that it'll be straightforward now to, to convert this over to Sprite Sheet Bundle. Cool. That wasn't so hard. So here we go. Uh, so Sprite Sheet Bundle, we need different stuff. Uh, it needs a sprite. So we need the texture atlas, first of all. Um, so we save sprite.tiles.clone. We can keep the transform there. Um, but we need uh, we need which tile it is from from that texture atlas. Um, so they do texture atlas sprite new, and you give it an index. Um, that's sprite new, right? So so this is where we need to know which one. And we were looking at the ghost, I believe, so we need to know which tile it is. And it's tile 121. And actually, we could have looked at, um, we could look look at this and go, yeah, that's 121, right? That makes it pretty easy. 121. Um, OK, let's see what is going wrong here. All right, so we need to say this is a sprite sheet bundle instead. Before we go farther, um, I want to make sure that uh, this works. And then we'll go and we'll convert everything over. Error, OK. So it didn't find, didn't find our tile map. Okay, so I did something wrong there. Tile map underscore packed. What did I do wrong? Kenny, Kenny E Y. <laughs> so I copy and paste as your friend, kids. Although the mi the mixture of underscores and dashes there is, Mwah. <laughs> okay. Let's try that again. Should work this time, if we did it right. Okay, so so we're still spawning our ghosts correctly, um, and they are coming from the sprite sheet now. So we can go. I think we can confidently go ahead with. Um, converting the other things over. Um, also, we have not needed this in a while since we started generating that from our int grid in LDTK. So let's just delete. Um, and we just fixed the ghost. So we can delete the ghost from this struct. Bye. And then let's go and duplicate those things in the uh, In the other places. So I think that's all in player. So let's start with the player. Okay, we don't have to do anything for the player. 
because it's already spawned by the entity um, from the level editor. Cool. Um, so we can go ahead and, and remove the knight from that struct. We're not using it at all. And the last thing is the dagger, um, and it's tile 103. So let's go fix that. Um, I would love to put it in here in default, um, but what we might need to do instead of default uh, is do from world. But maybe what we can do instead um, is just hard code it for now. And this would be sprite sheet bundle. And then down here, we'll do sprite sheet bundle. And then sprite assets. So this is going to be split left. And we'll look at what we did here. OK, so this is, we have texture atlas. And this is going to be tiles. So then we've got that type right. And then sprite is going to be texture atlas sprite new. And what do we have in there? Hello. Just give me that. Tile 103. What did I do wrong? Oh, sprite sheet. Yeah, that was the problem. OK. Um, and then we can get rid of this. Buy that. Goodbye. Um, we don't need this. Oops. We don't need this struct anymore. That was a nice cleanup. OK. So let's do a quick run, make sure that that's done. Uh, looks like we got some weirdness on the on the daggers. Notice they kind of blink. We have like maybe an off by one thing there going on. Hmm. Uh, let's look at the, the Tom app. Yeah, so I think there's there's sort of an off by one thing there. We're getting the bottom of this or like the bottom edge of that. It's the correct tile, but it's... Um, Look at this. We could potentially change this to be a custom size. Yeah, we might we might need to set a custom size. The thing is that this is, I'm wondering if this custom size is based off of the anchor point. Let's just give that a shot um, because I really don't like that it was, that little edge on it was added when we switched to the sprite sheet. Um, okay. I wonder I wonder if it's a floating point error problem. 
hard to tell. Okay. Um, well, let's go. Let's go over to. Yes. Hello, Bianca. Bianca, say hi to the the people on the stream. She hated that. <laughs> that was my goal. Okay. So we could we could say. Um, Uh, let's say let mute sprite is that and then sprite dot uh, custom size sum back to and we want to make it uh, still 16 wide but I think if we it's probably wrong to do like a half pixel um, but I want to give it a shot I don't know that that's going to work, <laughs> uh, but let's try it. <laughs> it's probably going to go, you can't have half a pixel, you idiot. No, it's still, so I think it, it's part of it is that it's still on the top. So the sprite, the original sprite is like the ones that are moving vertically. Um, and I don't know if you can all see that on stream, but it's, oops, lost said. Um, but that's really disconcerting. Um, so let's look at setting the anchor. Come on, Rust Analyzer, catch up. Um, I think the center would be fine. Maybe, maybe let's just drop it a whole two pixels because then we know that there's at least that much border around it. Um, the problem is I don't know if that is going to anchor from the center of the grid um, or if it's going to anchor from the top left of the tile, um, the center of the grid point. Uh, okay, it should be ready. Uh, anchor, what can we do? Anchor, is that an enum? Yes, thank you, Bianca. Thank you for rubbing on my microphone. Um, let's go to definition on that, if it'll catch up. Or we can look at the docs. Let's look at anchor. Oh, okay, so you can say, uh, does this implement default? Yes, how does it implement default? It doesn't say. Okay, so these are half extents. Top left is negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So why don't we just do anchor center? It's probably the default. Um, what's going on? Is that not in the prelude? Okay, well, let's see if it can import it. There we go. If not, we can maybe do like bottom center or something like that. Yeah, it's still happening. Um, no, what is what are the variants of that? Bottom center. Hmm, that's not helping. Okay. Honestly, it looks like to me a shader problem <laughs> um, where we're getting half pixels and it, um, the UV on that is not great. Huh. The, I mean, the, the whole idea of using a, a texture atlas um, and a, you know, a time map for that um, is to cut down on the amount of uh, resources you have to load. Um, and these are tiny. I'm not actually concerned about it, um, but we should be able to reuse that uh, cleanly. And I'm, I'm a little bit concerned 
um, about that being the way that it works. Uh, whereas before, when we had loaded the individual image, it was clean. Um, it was really weird that it's we're getting partial um, things from the from the the part above it. Okay, well, let's let's not worry about that for right now. Let's. Um, we completed that thing on our to-do list, so um, now we've got the sprite sheet. Um, let's make a commit real quick. Look at the diff. Ah, oh, deleted code. Feels so good. Isn't that the best feeling? Being able to delete things? Okay. Uh, we are going to, this is session 13, I believe, lucky 13, um, convert uh, sprites to use sprite sheet. The other thing that we could do, since we, we, we don't need, before we make this commit, let's, let's try that. Um, what we could do is say, these are Let's use the unpacked one, like the regular tile map. Um, so this is the packed one, which, uh, which the uh, LDTK is using, right? If we use the un the unpacked one, the one has gutters between them, we could potentially get uh, get a really clean border on that and not get that artifact. Let's zoom in. I'm guessing that's one pixel. Uh, let's do it on one of these. And I want to get pixel perfect here. Um, right, so that's, you know, if I select that, including the gutters, it's 18 by 18. So, um, so we have a one pixel gutter. Let's look at switching this. Uh, so let's use the regular tile map. Um, and from grid takes, grid cells are separated by some padding. The grid starts at offset pixels from the top left corner. Okay, so, uh, so we could say the padding, Right, those are both vec twos. So we can say the padding is some um, one um, and also the offset. Let's try that and see if we still get that artifact. Note that the um, because we we aren't changing anything about the you know the layout of that tile map is the same. Um, so we don't need to worry about uh, picking a different index in, in the, the sprite sheet. But yeah, there we go. So that, that kind of solved the problem. Having that transparent one pixel gutter made that come out clean. And we didn't have to change anything on the ghosts. Of course, the player is coming from the, the tile map selected in LDTK. Um, and we're good. It's actually surprising that even though it's pulling from the one in LDT cave that we didn't get that same artifact on, on the player. Honestly, we could probably look at that and, uh, well, there's, we probably don't see it, um, on the player because it's, yeah, we just, there, there is, I imagine we might see it if we get like this this um, uh, Cyclops guy. We might see the feet on the bottom of the, the knight there. If we get the crab, Ooh, we should add the crab to the game. Fitting, right? We're doing this in rest. Add the crab. Okay, so that, that's pretty good. Okay, so this is session 13. Um, and we're convert uh, individual sprites to using the sprite sheet. Okay.
let's push that. All right, let's come up with some things that we can do to improve this. Um, I've thought about, uh, I mentioned them at the beginning of the stream. Sorry if you missed it. Um, So we could uh, we could look at some UI things like health bars, um, damage given taken. Um, we could um, try to uh, generalize the uh, the weapon and uh, enemy spawns. Um, could see about uh, loading uh, love not level data but um, like um, entity information from uh, data files I say entity uh, like that's not right entities are just IDs in, in Bevy um, so let's say like uh, we could say um, game information from data files we already have, uh, you know, the 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 level um, being loaded with LDTK. Uh, I haven't really poked around about whether you can um, just make arbitrary data on level. I guess there's custom fields. Let's see if we can. Okay, so we can make an array, multiple values. This field contains a single value. Another thing we could do here is say uh, we could put like something that ref just refers to another file. Uh, and we load that file when we load the level. Um, and, uh, and that file contains like a table or like a, um, maybe there's a list of enemies that are spawned um, and we have different kinds of enemies. Kind of want to get to that spot where we can do a lot less coding to add new, new content. Um, so let's let's see about that. Maybe we could do it here. I'm not sure yet. Let's see what happens when you add an array. Um, okay, so you can add a file path. This is interesting. I haven't looked at this before. You can add an enum. Okay, um, let's do a quick Google search. Um, we are gonna look for uh, Bevy Ron. I don't know if you all have seen Ron. Um, uh, let's look at this one. I guess is, there's some good folks. Um, okay, that's been archived. So maybe it's Bevy Ron that we look at. Ron is like a rust like uh object notation and i don't think it it doesn't require serde i don't think no it does okay but it uses a really compact format or you can you know kind of write it like this um let's see here i wonder if there's any examples or guides let's look at the repository yeah, let's look at some examples because I think that it might be cool to, um, you know, write these as data files, um, and then and then we can start to generalize those things that we talked about earlier—the the, the components that specify how a weapon is spawned. Um, yeah, let's see here. Okay, so let's look. At, this is their example file. It's not naming the type here, but it's got a map. It's got a nested type. It's got a tuple of echo things. Okay. It's probably this decode file example. Okay, so here they're, they're saying this is their config. You derive debug and deserialize. Um, you've got the, this, this nested one. Okay, so it's kind of a shorthand for writing these things out. Um, and then 
you're reading. Right, reading this file. Okay, and you've got to do that. Uh, there was, this was just the RON repository. What happened? There's Bevy RON. I wonder if this is a, they've generalized it and it's not just Bevy because I click this repository and we get this, right? Um, okay. You know, another thing we could do is we could do like Toml or JSON or something, something that's already easy to edit from a text editor. Um, it looks like there's no attachment to Bevy anymore. So Yeah, trailing commas are allowed, single multi-line comments, field names aren't quoted, optional struct names, so you don't have to specify it all the time, enums are supported. Yeah, okay, they've got some like editor tooling Yeah, it's not designed to be self-describing. Okay, so they don't necessarily support these. <laughs> I use these <laughs> options on Saturday a lot. <laughs> okay, only supports string keys inside maps, flattened into structs, okay. Internally or adjacently tagged or must not contain. Okay, so there's a lot of restrictions on it. Um, What I would love to be able to do is to either like in a data file or here in LDTK, give a like a table or a list of some sort of here's, this is like maybe a goal we can work toward today. Here's a list of the types of enemies I wanna spawn and not, I mean, we could make entities these are project entities ooh that might be interesting maybe we can define this in ldtk and we don't need to bother with ron we maybe don't necessarily have to place each entity Maybe we can just define an entity and it doesn't have to exist in a level. I wonder though, if that's uh, gonna be possible. Okay. But we could, we could add these custom fields on there for things like, what is their health? What is their, um, and we already defined things like, uh, what is their their damage, their collision damage? What is the size of their collider? Um, what is their health? What is their speed? Those are things that we could pull, we could edit um, in the level editor and not have to hard code here. Um, it might make, oh, interesting, we did this. We didn't do that in the other one. It, it might make this a little bit more uh, difficult to spawn. In that we would need to have uh, a way to find that entity in the LDTK project data, um, even if it's not present in that level. So that's interesting to think about. Um, at the very least, the identifiers here will be really straightforward. Um, so like we could make a new entity and just say it's ghost. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, let's, let's use uh, this. It's this guy. Uh, we don't care about that pivot point center. Um, and then we could say like 
let's make a single value, which is um, a float. And we are running out of space here. Can I make the editor smaller? Yes, good, okay, cool. Hopefully y'all can still see that. Um, and we might be able to say like, um, uh, let's say speed, let's do speed first. Speed, um, and then the default value is 30. Uh, do not show. Um, okay, that's good. And then we could do something like, let's make an integer, which in our case, we could say uh, collision damage. And that was gonna be five. Um, and then let's make uh, another integer, which was gonna be health. And that was 10. Okay, uh, what else do we need here? We need size. Um, so let's see if there's a vec, there's a point. He's like a point. Hmm. We could also do an array of floats. I kind of feel like a point might be better because it's already two-dimensional. Do not show, but I can't, I can't. Okay, let's, let's just delete that. Let's make an array of floats. I'm not seeing how you edit it though. <sighs> Let's see, this is the default number of value for this field unless it's ever written by something else. Okay, so this is has to be two and two. Um, and this is gonna be uh, its uh, collider size. And I don't even know, like, I guess you just type 16 comma 16. Oh no, that's bad. That's supposed to be an array, guys. <laughs> no, we're not going to convert to integer. It needs to be a float. Interesting, I'm not sure about this yet. Display, do not show. Do we have to do 16? Oh, come on, let me see it. 16, like, uh, or brackets like that? No, it just deletes it. That's unfortunate. Maybe what we can do instead is say, um, let's just make two float fields, collider width. Um, the other thing that we could do as well is say, um, yeah, let's just do collider width and it's 16. And then collider height is also 16. Okay. This feels like it's a, you know, a progress toward um, something, something uh, better. We may, like, we may want to look at how the player is spawned as well. Maybe there's some, um, let's look at the docs for, I forget Ron for a minute. Um, let's look at the docs for ECS LDTK. And what I want to see is um, uh, 
Let's look at the LDTK entities. And uh, that's not what we care about. We do this, right? Um, okay, so, but here's the tag. So Sprite bundle, Sprite sheet bundle, worldly, grid chords. Uh, we don't care about nesting. From entity instance. Okay, they're looking there at the identifiers for the Okay, and you have to have an entity instance in the bundle, it looks like. We could do this. Um, see, I, I think the only problem with this potentially is that uh, we aren't going to be spawned. These, these uh, enemies are going to be spawned based on... Um, they're going to be spawned based on like game logic, not based on placement within a level. Uh, I'm going to add a tag here. It says enemy. And maybe what we can do, that was bad. <laughs> how, how do I even type enemy? OK. Um, I guess that'll let us group it. Uh, I wonder if we can do something like uh, look at the the LDTK project. Let's see. So starting here from the world bundle, look at the project. There's a lot probably in that data. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, this. There is a lot in this struct. Wow. Default entity ability. Okay. We're not really interested in the level map. Um, yeah, fine. Let's see what was the, it has some internal like associated type. Where is that? Boo. I saw it there. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. Okay. LDTK just along with metadata. And it's this metadata thing that, like, this returns. I don't actually, again, we don't care about the level map. We're just concerned with. Um, can we list the entities in it? Hmm. Okay. Let's see here, level metadata. Not interesting. Uh, asset flex, wait a minute. 
uh, if anyone knows anything about this, uh, what I'm looking for is basically um, like the, the layer information here, like what are the entities? It looks like it should be in there. I mean, obviously it needs to be able to spawn this, right? Um, but yeah. I'm probably gonna have to look at the source. Okay, LDTK project data. I wonder if it's just this LDTK JSON. Yeah. It's probably <laughs> not documented in here. <laughs> Let's have a look through the source, why don't we? Okay, so there's this, this thing. Create prelude LDTK entity. I don't know if that contains what we want, but um, I think we saw this one in the docs. There's not, not anything obvious in here. Now, I wonder about this table of contents thing, export to TOC, because I saw, if enabled, all instances of this entity will be listed in a table of contents of the root, this instances of this entity. but we're not placing any. We're not placing any. Okay, that's probably not it. Uh, world layout, VEC world. Okay. There is a prelude module in here. Okay, so app LDTK entity, let's look at that. I don't know that this is what we need, but let's have a look. Yeah, I mean, this is about spawning. Like there's this derive, right, that we saw on the player bundle. Um, But we don't actually, I don't know that it, or rather it's not clear that we can just put this LDTK entity on something, register it, and then ask Hey, spawn this kind of thing that would be my level editor, but isn't actually in the level definition. I don't know that we can do that. That would be ideal. We could just refer to it by name and go, hey, LGTK, give me one of these. Um, and again, this is about like customizing it as you load it. And it's just a trait. Right. Excuse me. Okay. Right, and they're notice here they're doing it for all these things, so um Yep. And 
looks like you can do a phantom. <laughs> so you can just load something that has no bundle. Um, that's fun. That doesn't even, yeah, that doesn't even implement a um, component. Phantom entity trait. Okay. Weird. I'm not sure. Okay, so there is an entity map. We should see maybe where that occurs. Oh, that's the registration thing. It's got to be the registration thing. Okay. So this is the stuff that they inject into the bevy app hmm So this is what we were doing before. Um, we can see it here in player. Uh, note that we have the player bundle, it derives LDTK ent entity, and then we register LDTK entity there with that identifier. Um, we could, mm, sorry, sorry for rubbing the, the microphone there with my shirt. Uh, we could do register the the bundles that mm. yeah and then they derive they implement that on app um okay so this is a this is just a placeholder to contain the type that you pass and it's boxed so that this can be you know box dine phantom ltdk entity trait right uh, we saw in the other file i think okay It's good to, you know, and I'm sorry this is not like really riveting content, uh, but it's good to understand how these things work because um, we might be able to make use of them or at least understand uh, when we go do something else um, what to expect. So. Okay. Let's see if we can learn anything else here. I, I kind of want to see. Hmm. Look back again at this because I think that we could. Without deriving, we might be able to do this um, from ent entity instance. Or 
right? This thing. Except that we don't. What is this entity? Where does this entity instance come from? It comes from in here. Field instance. Yeah, pub use field instance. Let's see the entity instance. Okay. Grid identifier. There's the fields that we care about. Yeah, I just, I don't know. we really can do that sort of thing. Hmm. Because we're not, again, I don't want to add, I just want to define the data for this, this entity. I don't want to actually add it to the world necessarily. Um, unless we did something like, um, I don't know, we define where they spawn. We just like click around. <laughs> um, and and then maybe they don't uh, they don't get pulled in to the level. Oh, that feels weird. Okay. Well, let's um, let's duplicate this and let's make a cyclops, <laughs> right? Um, and let's go here um, and let's give him more health. And his speed, let's make him slower. Uh, and his collision damage is going to be 10. And his collider can be be the same size like this just for just for fun um i'm going to uh let's 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 make some more duplicate all right and what other enemies can we have let's have the crab crab and let's see its health will be I don't know, let's make it 12. The ghost was 10, right? So, um, and its speed is also going to be pretty slow. We can leave the same speed as the Cyclops. Collision damage is going to be less. Okay, so hopefully this will, you know, be we'll be able to create some interesting things here. That's, so we got like, a green ghost as well as a white ghost. Let's make a bat. This is a bat. And its health is going to be also 10. We'll keep it pretty weak. But let's make it fast. Um, and collision damage should be low. And this is interesting. It no, I think I think we can leave the collider size the same. And then what we can do is, uh, as we start to get this filled out, uh, maybe we'll we'll add the um, some of them to the world just for fun, uh, and get them to spawn. That might be a good place to end end the stream today. All right, let's let's make one more. Let's see what else we can make. Spider or rat? What do y'all think? Those rats, they look so weird. 
Let's make a spider. Okay. Uh, that health is 10. The spider, let's make it just slightly more healthy. I don't know why. Uh, speed, let's make it a bit faster. See, the Cyclops is 15. Let's make it 20. Um, and collision damage should be pretty low as well. Okay. So just for fun, um, yeah, let's, let's give the player a tag. Just a player. Doesn't actually matter. Um, so we, let's add a Cyclops. Right, yeah. Okay, so you can you can tweak the defaults here. I don't really need to. Let's add a crab over here. Let's add three bats over here, and let's add five spiders. Okay. So we will still spawn ghosts. We could potentially turn that off. Um, and that's, that's maybe another thing that we could potentially do is um, rather than automatically spawning enemies, we could maybe classify priority or like order of when entities on the map are spawned. Uh, we just like stuff them down in the corners. I don't know. Um, and then uh, set a tick, which picks the next entity to spawn. So like maybe these are not, not visible, not active yet. And then we, after a time, we remove a component from them. Um, that causes them to be active and to chase the player. That's something to think about. Um, right, but in the meantime, let's, so we, we saved this. We've got five kinds of enemies now. Let's uh, close that out and let's go back over here and look at our, our ghost. And I think I want to rename this file to enemies. Uh, we'll have to change that in our main enemies um, and let's go up here let's find where's the plugin let's rename that to enemies plugin hi Chris uh, <laughs> this is kind of a question for you Chris um, whether whether you know about if we can, you know, over in LDTK, like define these these entities, but not not put them in the world, uh, but still get to that data inside our game. Uh, that's uh, one thing I don't don't really know how to do. Um, so we're 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 just throwing them in there for now and see what else we can we can do on that. Okay, um, so I think what I want to do here is. I would like to collapse this into an enemy bundle and then we'll, uh, used to, yeah. Um, I've been thinking about that. Yeah. Anyway, so let's, let's put rather like, let's define a ghost bundle as a ghost entity, um, which is just our tag for it. Right. And then we'll, let's have an enemy bundle, which is this. Um, so, And we're going to have to use, uh, let's see. Yeah, I've got everything in the prelude, so it should be fine. Okay, so let's extract that. And we'll maybe get rid of the auto spawning here. Uh, so let's, let's just comment that out. Um, and yeah, we don't care about that right now. Uh, this 
This logic, though, is interesting. Hmm. We spent a lot of time fixing that. <laughs> uh, okay, so so let's make. Remember, I I commented that out, and I'm going to say derive bundle. enemy bundle and we'll put those fields in there and um, and then let's make a because we want to kind of classify the components there I would like to change that system from just ghost chases to all enemies chase that's what I'm trying to get at here this is why I'm putting this Okay, and then we'll we'll put this here. And uh, one thing that default. One thing I'm not sure about is should we be implementing the from. Here we're not gonna we're not gonna do this. It's all gonna come from the data. Uh, the the from LDTK entity instance thing. Okay, and this is going to be enemy is enemy bundle. And I think that if we're going to nest them like this, we have to tag this. So let's put that on there. And then I think there was something. Oh, and I probably lost it. Because mm. we were looking at the code. Right? Hmm. It was this derive macro. I think this from entity instance. I don't remember if there was an auto derive on there. Hmm. And the docs on this are like nothing. <laughs> you have to look at the source. That kind of sucks. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think it was in here. Okay, so here's the derived macro usage, which is kind of what we want to do, right? Um, I think, yeah, so if we do, so indicates allowing for nested, right? This is what we want to do, I think. Right, so we'll, we'll put this derive on our enemy bundle and then we'll tag the field that contains the enemy bundle there. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's do LDTK uh, entity. Um, and then this can derive LDTK entity. Uh, although probably what we'll want to do is look at, um, rather than deriving it, uh, which requires it to have default, right? Uh, we might want to do uh, I guess we could we could leave it there and we can do we can tag this with sprite sheet bundle um, and then we can look at uh, making each of these 
be derived from those fields we defined from entity instance. Right, there's also this option of making a function that just takes the entity instance and gives the thing contained there. Which that might be good. Hmm. Let's let's start with Okay, this is going to fail cuz you know it doesn't implement default. Um And then we'll we'll pretend here for a minute. <laughs> uh, these things don't implement default, right? Um, I wonder if we can go ahead and tag those. the I think we probably want to do this on those I wonder if it'll still complain if they don't implement default if I do this entity instance it's yeah yeah, it's not. Uh, we we need to we need to handle that. These two things not implementing default is a problem. So um, we can just derive default because we don't actually care. Um, and let's go back. This one doesn't implement default. Yeah, derive default. Oops. Okay, so now on these, uh, we need to implement that. So let's go back over here to collision damage. Um, and we'll want to implement it on these other things too, we just haven't bothered. Um, so impl from entity instance for collision damage. Um, and then what we can s look for is uh, we defined in here, so um, like on the ghost, there is a collision damage field. So let's look for that in there. Uh, field instances. Okay, so if let uh, sum I'm going to try to find it. Find iter find. Okay, and this is going to be a field instance. Well, that's not helpful. Let's look at what that field instance thing is. Uh, no, I don't care about from. Field instance. Identifier. And then value. Identifier, yep. I'll say if that is equal to collision damage. Uh, it would be nice if I could say, hey, pull this from this field um, and then pass the thing to me. But um, the one thing I'm not sure about on here is um,
interesting uh, is whether there's a default. So like if there's going to be a field instance here, uh, let's look at entity instance. Whether yeah, I don't I don't know that there's gonna be default fields or this is just gonna be a copy of everything that is the default. Well, maybe we can find out. <laughs> uh, let's see. Does does that field instance? Uh, no. Field instance. That derived debug, yeah. So we can uh, found, let's say, found collision damage, damage field, and then we'll field debug it. Um, otherwise, we'll we'll just say default, default. So what we want to do here is look at the field value. Okay, we'll just get the actual value with the expected type. This value be adjacent, right? Okay, so field value, we want to look for, it should be an int, and this is i32, so we're going to have to convert it to u32. It's option. Uh, I wish I had let chains right now. <laughs> Uh, so I, th I think what we'll do is we'll just, we'll say this, and we'll just do ifs. Okay, if let's sum, let's see. Say field value, right, of int, and that's going to be, contain sum of v the restation urge to use light nightly i know like left chains are so good oh well um <laughs> field dot value okay if let okay and then uh we will return collision damage i guess we use self here self Amount is V as U32. Um, otherwise, we just return default. We fall through. Uh, let's let's start with that, um, and then let me go over back over here to the uh, the enemies. And this one, let's just leave it as the default, and we'll see if this collision damage thing works when spawning. Um, and one more thing I think is important to do, just so we we know what we're looking at. Um, let's uh, print out uh, converting uh, entity instance uh, uh, to collision damage, and we'll print out. Yeah, it's just gonna be the string. We'll say value dot identifier. I think it is. Yep, we'll print out that, um, and then I'll tell us which uh, which kind of entity we're we're converting there. Okay, let's see what what do we got going on here, compiler. Okay. Um, I renamed, I didn't rename that module correctly. Enemies. Uh, we'll need to change that up. Enemies. Uh, ghost bundle. Default. Okay, so we just need default on ghost. Easy enough. Um, uh, 
Right. Okay. So there's no function on that. Um, let's go to that line in a minute here. Let's fix those import errors. Um, we want to change this to enemy probably rather than ghosts. So this is enemies. enemies plugin yep again enemies uh, okay we're not using sprite anchor just a warning okay so we're down to this one which is really just um, an issue of we need to not call that <laughs> we just we just need to comment out this whole function for now this whole system sad we spent so much time on that uh, okay warnings yeah those are unused we don't care about that yeah that's not used fine okay levels why is that let's go there I don't know, this is an enemies.rs. Okay, we don't need that. We don't need RNG. We don't need sprite assets or spawn locations. Um, okay, so, so the other thing that I want to do real quick is let's look for where we, oh, that's fun, uh, where we use ghost, and let's say enemy. Um, and then we don't care about uh, it only being ghost enemies. It can be any enemy. All right, let's find the other places. So here in combat, let's use enemy, right? remove ghost we don't care about it specifically being ghost that's only going to be for um spawning that that particular particular type yep okay we fixed it there that's fine Right, okay, so let's let's go fix this one in enemies.rs. Let's they were chasing the player. Uh, we want to do with enemy. Um, and then let's rename this. Enemies. All the enemies chase the player. Okay. And um, This we're gonna have to fix. So we need it to be, maybe we wanna just change direction without changing the magnitude. Let's go to definition for that. Uh, where are all the places we're using that? Okay, we have it in player, that's fine. Um, maybe we make Go to back to the definition. Let's make one that's simpler, which is change direction. Um, and and that will take pub fun. Thank you. So we'll need to get this the speed. So the the um, the current, basically the current um, magnitude of this this vector already. Okay, so let's say let's speed is uh, self dot value dot length. Yep, and then we'll do self dot change direction speed, direction speed. Easy enough. Uh, so we want to. 
not change because these you know these enemies have different speeds so we'll just change the direction only this is really dumb uh <laughs> logic if we had any internal walls in our uh, in our level here uh or any other kind of obstacles we're gonna have enemies stuck on them and it's funny uh i i do play uh crafty survivors and it has that particular problem there be you'll be moving around the map and there's like trees or rocks or something in the middle and enemies will get stuck on the opposite side of them and not be able to move toward you um honestly a star is probably too complicated to to compute for that for every single um uh every single enemy that's on the screen so they just don't bother it, it doesn't it doesn't detract from the gameplay too much because eventually you're moving around and they find a way to get unstuck and get toward you so but anyway um so we can change just the direction um and since we already had that other method on there that would let us change the direction and speed um we can we can be sure that they are um they're moving in the right way um so the only other thing there is that if we're gonna have to make sure that when we yeah we might need to to implement from entity instance for the movement bundle as well because i think that we probably want to if they have a a speed field on there um we want to initialize it with the velocity with that speed and maybe the direction is just like toward uh the center and then it'll immediately get adjusted uh as soon as the enemy is is spawned so let's lo let's look at the i'm sorry not the enemy is spawned but like after it's spawned um and it starts chasing Oh, this is a bigger refactor than I had I had thought, but let's 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 soldier on here. Okay, so we we have the ghost bundle, um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and implement or let let's start this. There's not going to be anything interesting that happens here, um, but let's let's try to run this. Um, because I want to see what we get printed out. OK, so we didn't register. Now, we're not going to spawn any ghosts. Um, we didn't register that bundle as an entity. So let's uh, let me look real quick. Did I put ghosts in the level? No, I put Cyclops. Let's put a ghost in the level. Um, and let's put like some of them like that. OK. Yeah, so we need to, in our plugin here, uh, we need to register LDTK entity um, ghost. And this needs to be the ghost bundle. OK, and then I want to see it. Um, I want to see, you know, if we get these fields like because we we set the collision damage right it should print them out as we're spawning okay um and those ghosts will hopefully eventually move toward us what did we get in here okay so we found collision damage field yep so we're getting the ghosts Collision damage is there uh, in some five. OK. And let's see. I don't know if these ghosts are moving at all or if they even got spawned completely. <laughs> I didn't see. OK, uh, so so that that seems to be the way that we should go for the rest of this is um, to to derive the rest of those fields from the fields defined in the editor that that feels like a good a good way to go for now 
Okay, so uh, going up here, where is our enemy bundle? Yeah, so let's do from entity instance for health. And we're going to do it for movement as well. Okay, and it should complain about those, so let's go do this for health. Um, and I think that we did this for collision damage. We're going to need to do that for collider as well. We can remove these infos. Okay. So do the same for health. So we're looking for you know, it has a field named health. We can do it the same as we did on collision. Split that right so I can read it. So I, I honestly wish there were, a, if this, I wish this were indexed. <laughs> oh boy, that's all right. Um, Value dot field instances dot iter find field and abbreviate that identifier health. Okay, so if we find it um, and should be an int. Then we return. Um, and this has no cooldown. We only have cooldown for the player. We might want to also implement that for the player. Something to think about. Or we just don't bother. <laughs> we, we, we hard code that because we don't really care. Um, it's going to be the same. Uh, okay, so we're going to return self. And then if none of those match, we're, we return default. Default. The, the My only issue with doing this default thing is it's not actually useful in the context of our game. I feel like we should panic. And maybe, maybe that's the right thing to do. Uh, v as U32. We don't care about the cooldown. Uh, import that, please. Field. Yeah. Um, yeah. We need to think about that. Panicking might be a good solution right there. Okay, so we did it for health. We can kind of probably copy pasta this for some other things. Um, the other thing that we could do here is, is unwrap. Yeah, that could cut down on our if let's here. Future refactor. Why don't I put it to do in here? Because I, I think that, that that'll be useful. Uh, unwrap instead of if let. If let will make sure our project data is not missing this. Um, and we could we could do the same over here. Yep. All right. Uh, so 
We did it for health. Let's do it for movement bundle. Uh, simple from entity instance. For movement bundle. Uh, and this one, I think that it's probably safe. Um, we're not going to be calling this um, for the player. So it's probably safe to return the default. And I'm just going to copy pasta that thing we just did. Health. We don't care about unwrapping here. This is more about um, speed. OK, so if we get This is going to be field value float sum s is field dot value. Uh, then we'll return self velocity from direction speed and honestly we can just say vec three zero we don't care about what the direction is um, and the speed is going to be that so let's rename that speed um, and we need to return that import field value The problem with VEC30, maybe we say VEC31, uh, because if it's normalized to zero, this speed will get lost. So let's just make it um, 111. Um, or maybe we say uh, x, positive x. Um, then it's a unit vector times that speed. Because if I pass zero, then that speed would be lost when multiplying because it tries to normalize the vector. Um, so for a split instant, they will be moving in the x direction, um, uh, but then they're going to be uh, redirected as soon as they uh, get moving, as soon as they start chasing. Oh, and here's a case where we need to change this to enemy. Keep inside walls, enemy. Um, yep. And again, that's just a tag component that doesn't have any functionality other than classifying these, these sorts of things. OK, what do we got? Um, yeah, let's go over here, clean up these constants. I'm just going to comment them out for now. I kind of want to keep them around. Um, And let's look again at our uh, enemy bundle. Uh, so we need to do, we got the collision damage, we got the health, we got the movement. We need to also do the collider. Um, and it's going to complain about that. So um, what we can do on the collider Now, I guess we're, yeah, we're already in collision, so we're already importing those things. We can do similar to this. And I am going a bit longer than I intended, but I think that's okay for now. So 
one thing that we need to do differently in this one is we need to do I think we'll structure this differently so we'll say um, let sum let's see yeah let sum And this is going to be a uh, collider width. We'll take value field instances, iter find map, um, and we want to we want to look at the contents of that that field again. Because remember, we couldn't when we were in the editor, we couldn't make a like a vec two. Um, we can make a point, but like it required something to do with the map rather than um, intrinsic to that that entity. So we did collider width and collider height. Um, so we'll do here's this field uh, identifier identifier is collider width uh, then we'll we'll do something else none and this will be um, return default so we're just going to return default on any of these cases where we don't um, find that field this bit is a little bit much, but I think we could do something like this. And I'm going to have to put all of this in curly brackets. Um, I'm going to fake it for now, um, uh, just to get the formatting right. Okay, so what we want to do here is uh, if another if let field value float sum w um, is f dot value. I feel like this is a case where I would love to have something like derive more. I don't know if you all have seen that crate. Really, really helpful when you have an enum um, to give me like methods that I can call that just do the unwrapping for me. Um, and they either panic or they return none or something. Um, like I would love for, give me the float value for Pete's sake. <laughs> Um, and so we'll, we'll do that. The other thing that we could do is not care about whether it's sum. Um, return W. That, that way we've got, um, if it's a float value, and it's collider width, whether it's present or not, we can return it. And then I'll be uh, none. OK, so let's. Start with that. What's wrong here? I have too many braces. There we go. 
Okay, so this is you know obviously going to fail. We'll do something like similar for this with um, collider height. Can you all hear my cat snor snoring? <laughs> uh, collider height. Okay. Um, I guess the other thing I could do here is is uh, rather than this, like after I found both of them, zip them together. This option has a. Oh, I don't need to look at Python. Option has uh, a zip. And then you get a tuple. Let's do that. That's fun. Okay, so we we try to find the collider height, try to find the collider width. Uh, sum, and this would be tuple uh, width height. Collider width, zip, collider height else default okay and then here we can go collider or self new back to new width height okay Let's go back over this. So we're finding, we're trying to find the field in this entity that has collider width, the field that has collider height. If they're both present, we create a collider using its constructor um, with that size um, and return that. Otherwise we return a zero size collider. Okay, uh, that's pretty good. What's this? That's not used. We don't care about that right now. I would love to maybe pull these out into some functions. Maybe we make a trait that extends entity instance and like gives me the field I care about. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that would be super nice. And just just out of curiosity, I'm gonna I'm gonna look again. Um, on entity instance, I don't think it has. Yeah, you know, it doesn't really have interesting methods. It looks like you're expected to just look at the fields yourself. So some bevy reflection goop looks like type registrations. Oh, well, what do you know? <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, I wish I looked at the, it's on the, they made their own trait. <laughs> let's do a refactor and then we'll go. <laughs> God, I'm such a bonehead. Uh, let's do the refactor and then, and then we will, uh, we will move on and these return results not not uh, options so what is this ldtk field found field not found wrong field type unexpected null we actually don't care about those so we'll just um yeah let's do that uh so value we want an int field here get int field if i had just started typing for pete's sake um collision damage and the thing is since this is returns result i think we can just do dot okay here oops dot oh. um and that's going to be value not field and we can cut that down Needs star v there. What's wrong? 
Uh, matching, okay, fine. Clippy. Why you got a harsh Manello there? Okay, and then let's turn this into a straight if else, rather than an early return. Yeah. Okay, that's much cleaner. Uh, now, the other thing we could do in this case is unwrap, like we were talking about. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Clippy was helping me, <laughs> and so was the chat. Thank you for, for chiming in. Okay, so this is going to be much better. Much, much better. Uh, let's look at all those other things where we did that. So movement. Did we do one in here? Yeah, we did this in here. So we can go, we're expecting a float field. Get float field. Uh, speed. If let OK. And we can delete that. And we can delete that. Uh, and that's good. And let's do else here, put the fault in there. Much, much cleaner. Uh, let's rename that to speed. Oops, speed, okay. Um, we need to deref that. Uh, I suppose I could potentially also do dot copied. I don't, I think result has copied on it. I know option does. I'm pretty certain option does. Uh, yeah, so copied and cloned. If it's a reference. Not a big deal there. Honestly, you know, it's a float. It's going to be in a register anyway. We don't need to be that explicit about it. Uh, we can just deref. Okay. Uh, do we have anything over here? Nope. Uh, let's look at health. Okay, so here again, we can do get int field. And that's going to be health. Okay, and this is going to be, we'll change that to V, get rid of that if. Else. Uh, okay, and again, deref that. And then we probably have one or two more or sitting around here somewhere that I haven't seen. Do I have anything in here? No. Let's look at warning. Okay, since we're not matching on that, we don't care about it anymore. Uh, again, here. I wonder if those if that uh, trait is in the in the prelude. I suspect it is. Yep. So honestly, I should go through and change all those imports to the prelude. Uh, thank, thanks, Textified. Um, uh, see you next time. Have a good rest. OK. Wow, this is a wild ride. I didn't expect to go on today. Uh, pretty cool, though. So so now we're, we're starting to get to um, I can remove this comment because we're not using unwrap and we could potentially do unwrap here um, because we want to make sure that all of our enemy entities have health on them um, but I don't know we can we can just say you have zero health <laughs> and they'll be despawned immediately that'll be fun okay um, what I would like to do now is um, let's let's move all these enemies really close to the player so we can see them when we start up. 
Um, and we will, we should see, now we will only see the ghosts because um, we only define the ghosts. These other things won't be spawned because we didn't register them. That should be really quick. Um, we could even potentially just register them as enemy bundles and not care about what kind of enemy they are. Got to get the crab in there. Crab rave. Okay, so they're going to all spawn around the player. Player is probably going to get hit immediately. That'll be fun. Uh, let's cargo run. Let's see the fruits of our labor here. Okay, so they are spawning correctly. They are getting hit by the dagger, and they're dead. Cool. That that was great. Um, so I think... Let's let's copy pasta this. Let's say let's make a cyclops. Uh, what other kinds of entities do we have? We had ghost, cyclops, crab, bat, and spider. And crab, yay crab. It's it's a game in Rust. You have to have a crab in it, right? It's it's. If I were to name this, uh, let's just call it kind. Um, and then yeah. It's almost like we should make a uh, macro, but I'm not going to do that right now. We only have five kinds of enemies. Uh, crab, we need a bat. Bat bundle kind. Bat. And let's copy this so we don't get that the name of the field being a, bat, a ghost again. And finally, a spider. Uh, it is interesting. I wonder if that is a pattern that other games do where in, you know if you don't need to differentiate on the kind of entity if they're all sort of the same class but have different attributes um, if you would just spawn register you know all these identifiers as enemy bundles rather than the individual bundles so because what we're going to do here is like uh, let's get the cyclops hey don't mess with my keyboard oh shoot cats man no. Okay, fine. We'll leave it there. <laughs> Cyclops bundle. Thank you. Okay. Um, and we have the crab bundle. Because, like, me typing this in here is fine, but it feels like, oh, geez, this is, you know, uh, tedium that a tool could do for me. And finally, spider. Uh, we might look at the, I think I, I did look at it earlier, the implementation of this function. Um, I think it's possible that, because they, they put a, a, a zero type struct with just a type contained in it, just like a phantom data, um, but it's like, it, that that struct implements a trait um, and then it's you know it's put into a collection with a uh, type erasure uh, not type erasure but it like it uses a trait object um, so basically it's so that you can find a method to construct that thing um, and I excuse me I would love to just do enemy bundle on all these just like loop through the uh, the list of um, the list of enemy kinds and just go hey these are all enemy bundles let's start with this and then maybe we'll throw it out later let's see if that works <sighs> oh my goodness I'm surrounded 
Run. Okay, there's something wrong with the collider on the crab. That's fun. Um, notice how the uh, the daggers go through them. Uh, oh, note that it's everything but ghost. I think what we did was um, we did not let. Yeah, it's in combat. Um, we have knockback collisions. I'm sorry. No, it's in. It's in collision. Do we handle collision damage in here? Oh, and we can we can read we can redo this as well. Handle collisions on enemy. Uh, what? Where's the one that where we apply damage? Handle collisions just emits the events. Oh, it's in health, right? Right, okay, so I think up here, yeah, so we just did ghost. What we need is enemies can take damage from dagger and players can take damage from enemies. Um, so, that was our problem there. Cool. Uh, I think our, our guys are dying too easily. <laughs> I think our dagger is doing too much damage, uh, but yep. Okay. And there was, so there was one more place I saw, right, and it had to do in here. It was, we were doing the find stuff that we didn't want to do. Yeah. Okay, so we can go uh, let, I guess we can zip results as well, right? Can you zip those? Probably not. That would be too convenient. I guess we, we could use and then, or and. Is that is that a thing? Okay, so they have to have the same result type. Why is there no zip on results? Okay. So we'll we'll say okay, let okay with value dot get float field. Lighter width. Uh, I'm going to say let width is this. We'll just do it like that. Um, we'll handle the result later. Um, okay. Height, get float, field, collider, height. Okay, we can get rid of that. And then we could say uh, if let okay with 
okay height equals width height and we can do this in brackets okay so yeah and then we'll we'll start all that stuff okay that's pretty good much much cleaner than what we had before that was a lot of code <laughs> okay let's let's wrap this up um i'm going to let's quickly update the to-do text um so we generalized the enemy spawns um uh, we have not generalized weapons so let's edit that we're kind of saying we're loading inf information from data files we're doing with LDTK right now. So um, let's maybe next time think about generalizing the weapons. Um, and then let's work on some UI things. I think like health bars would be great. Uh, little popovers that last for a little bit when something takes collision damage. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that would be really great. All right. Really quick little look, look at the, yeah, we, we can clean that up. We don't need that import. Um, let's really quickly do use bevy ECS LDTK and simplify our imports there for the future. Yeah, let's just do prelude star. Uh, we've got it there. Yeah, because we, we don't need to be specifying those if it's always in the prelude. And then it'll just be a lot less noise. All right. Uh, okay, we can jump over that stuff. Can you... Wow, that created a lot. Look at all those fields we added. <laughs> okay, interesting. It's putting the default UID in there. Okay. And we've got uh, generalized enemies. And let's let's make that the commit message. Uh, source. So uh, this is still session 13. Generalized enemies. Uh, enemy spawns to be defined in LDTK. And yeah, I think it's a good place to stop. Thank you everybody for coming and for sticking on half an hour longer than I normally run. Um, and uh, love seeing all the interaction in the chat and we'll see you next time. <laughs>